I'm, I'm, I'm watching our time and it's flying by, but I did want to ask you, you've got uh, posted at your website for anybody who's thinking, hey, I, I think this sounds pretty good. I want to be a writer like Cindy Callahan. Uh, you've got six secrets to writing success. And since I've got you, I thought we'd go through them a little bit uh, and, and, and get some nuance on, on a couple of these things. So six secrets. The first is a well-written story. What does that mean? What's a well-written story look like? Yeah, I mean, that's a big, it was tough to kind of come six and, and smush them all together. Um, so I think well-written has a lot of pieces to it. You know, character setting and plot, or and idea character setting and plot. To me, those are sort of the four the four different buckets. It has to be a, an interesting idea or an intriguing idea with told with colorful characters, um, a, a nice, interesting plot, ideally some twists, and put in a, a setting that people will enjoy. Um, and that's the macro level, but then the micro levels need to need to be well done too. Um, spelling, grammar, typos, all of that stuff. Um, and that's the that number one is sort of the craft piece. Um, I'll put one more little plug for the micro. So I am I am a sort of a big idea person, and I am a typo queen. So I. Um, do spend time on the back end after something's drafted with proofreaders and um and rereading and rereading and trying to catch a lot of those those little things which you call them little things because they are little things but if someone that you want to be impressed with your project um sees a lot of those little things it, it's it's not impressive so spending time on the minutia is really important uh, and step two is a uh, well-told story. So how is a well-told story different than a well-written story? Yeah, I might have sort of combined those a little bit, but I think the told part is is the storytelling piece of the craft. So that's the, how is it going to unfold? What are the order I'm going to put my clues in? Am I going to have cliffhangers at the end of each each chapter to draw the reader in to help turn the page? So that's the well-told piece. No, that's very distinct and different than than well written. You absolutely need both steps. I, I support continuing six six steps. <laughs> so step number three uh, is feedback loop. What's what's that, and how do you get one? Yep, I think critique partners are priceless um, because I might read pages in a certain way, and once I and and they're of course they're brilliant. Every time I send them out to critique partners, they're already brilliant, um, and they'll bring things to my attention that, yep. I didn't see it that way, or I don't agree with you. But if two or three people say it and I don't agree with it, there's something there that I have to look at and change. Um, so both I get feedback both on a macro level and a micro level from critique partners. I don't know how a writer can a writer can certainly write without critique partners. That's fine. Uh, I don't know that you can have a an excellent piece that you want to show to agents and editors without having had that feed that feedback loop. And you're a member of two different critique groups or have been, right? I have been um, at the one of them sort of fizzled during um, during COVID. Uh, and I actually just joined another one for picture books because I'm, I'm just starting to do some picture books. But uh, I have tried to have a, a range of critique partners. Um, and like I said, I also have like a um, a um, proofreader that I hire before I send something to my agent. I normally have it have it proofread because there's still going to be commas and periods and typos and, and things that I reading something I have snowball half the time snowballs one word and half time it's two words. And that's, you know, I, I, I'm shocked that I picked it up because that's the type of thing that I would very easily miss and depend on a proofreader to pick that up. Jim, the out of curiosity, you, you hire a proofreader, but the agent is going to get 15% at some point, right? So couldn't the, couldn't the agent maybe uh, this spring for their proofreader? <laughs> so I'll do it even before I send it to my agent because I don't want my agent to get it and feel like I either was sloppy about it or I didn't care about it. It's all, to me, that's like a lack of professionalism. If I'm going to send something to my agent that I know probably has a lot of typos in it, even though I've read it many times, um, I think it's worth spending. And proofreading, copy editing is a lot more expensive than proofreading. Um, I think it's worth spending that money up, up front to have a more professional appearance with my work. There you go. Steamed audience, you heard it. That's what separates the pros from the amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, and then step four is a well-pitched query. Yes, you talked about it earlier. I think having a, a query, and I even have a, uh, you're gonna need a, well, a, a well-written query if you're going to query agents. Having a well-written query paragraph or summary or pitch of your book helps with every process of your book. And I'm not pitching agents anymore because I have one, but I make a pitch paragraph, two paragraphs, for every project that I work on. And when I'm sending it to my current agent, even though I'm not pitching her, I say, okay, here's here's what the pitch of the book could, could sound like. Because it gives her a frame of what I'm going for before she even reads page one. Um, you know, maybe I am comparing it to this other project or this is the log line. Uh, and, and that gives her an idea of when she's gonna pitch editors, here's about where I'm thinking it's gonna be. Um, and she might disagree with that for a number of reasons. That's not selling right now. Or um, in order for that pitch to work, this and this is gonna have to happen in the manuscript. But I like to have a pitch for every project that I work on. Um, and it also helps me keep my work more intriguing if I know I have this North Star that I'm working towards. Gotcha. Uh, that that query you'll write that before you write the the full book then or some version of it probably probably in the beginning middle and end i might write it ahead of time here's what i think i'm going for and then as i write the novel i'll have to i'll have to make changes query is going to be edited a million times before it goes out and if it goes out to a handful of of agents and i would advise doing agents kind of in in buckets you know send it out to 10 and see what type of feedback you get because depending on on that, you you might tweak it, um, or you've gotten more experienced or more smarter, or you're more smarter, um, or you've gotten smarter, or your work has transformed a little bit, um, and you want to finesse the query a little bit for the next 10, and so on, and it can evolve. Gotcha. So by uh, keeping your 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 submissions to the shorter groups, that way, if there is a mistake or anything, you can catch that and you're not repeating it all across. Don't don't if it's shoot. Something that's it's something that's not resonating, or if you get an, an email back from I, I don't even know what it could be. Maybe you use the term older middle grade, and someone you might hear back from three of those agents that say something like I don't know what you mean by older middle grade. Then you know that 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 term isn't working. I need to change change it or research it or figure out how I'm going to better explain that. No, you're right back to that agent. You say, I heard it on the Middle Grade Ninja podcast. So I can't. <laughs> <possibly know." laughs> uh, step five is an advocate. What, what, an advocate. So for me, that's for me, that's an agent. It's also my my family. Um, it's also my critique group. Um, you know, they're your your cheering squad and people who are on your side. Um, and from the agent perspective or lawyer or whoever it is, you know, there's there's a lot more people who know a lot more than me. Um, and knowing I I have those people to advocate for me uh, is huge because I don't um, I, I'm not an agent. I don't want to be an agent. I'm not uh, an attorney. I don't want to be an attorney. So I can get those people on my side to do that portion of the work for me. Uh, and then six is a time and a place to write. Yes. Time and a place um, to write for you. Whatever time works, whatever place works. Yesterday I, I was reading pages and I knew there was going to be stuff going on at my house. And for some reason, I didn't want to sit at the coffee shop, which I often sit at the coffee shop. So I sat in my car for an hour and edited probably 30 pages by hand. I had my coffee. It was super comfortable. I was looking at the forest. So whatever your place, whatever your time, um, carve it out. Because unless your butt is in a chair, it's not going to happen. Uh, so when butt goes in chair, when you're trying to decide whether you've had a successful session or not, do you aim for a word count? Do you aim for a story, event? How do you mark your progress? That's really tough. I, sometimes I do. If I'm if I'm drafting, I definitely have word counts or page page counts that I want to reach. Um, like today, I'm editing at a more micro level, and I'm like, right, I want to try to get through 50 pages today. But sometimes you you find rabbit holes and I might only get through 10 because I found something that 
like needed a lot more attention than I was predicting. So, um, so sometimes it's difficult because there, there are these ditches all over the place and life gets in the way too. You know, the school nurse could call at any time and then your day is out the window, your week may be out the window. So, um, I do try to have a plan each day, but I'm not too tough on myself if I don't meet the plan because sometimes it's, sometimes the work is really deep uh, and one page can be super time consuming. Ah, alas, writing is just not one of those things that can be an exact measured count every time. Right, yep. Um, if that's what you want, I guess I'd stick with pharmaceuticals. Eh? <laughs> 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 right.